and we're here at the CES unveiled. Hi, so who are you? I'm Srinivas Patamata. I'm a VP of Marketing and Business Development from Atmosic Technologies. We are a Bluetooth chip company that is doing energy harvesting, and uh, we achieve two unique things. We can actually extend the battery life so that the battery lasts for five to 10 years, or in some special cases, as you can see here, we can run without battery. We can do four kinds of harvesting. We can do, if you point to here, we can do RF, light, motion, thermal. We can do four kinds of energy harvesting. And uh, by doing that, we can eliminate batteries or the replacement of batteries forever. Can I see this one you have there? So which one is this one doing? Is this this is doing RF energy harvesting. So where does it harvest? It's harvesting wireless energy coming out of this 900 megahertz antenna. You can also take 2.4 gigahertz that's in the building and harvest that also. You can harvest all this uh, trashy Wi-Fi stuff? Yes, everywhere? you can, you can. Really? Yes. There's energy in that? Yes, there is energy in that. As long as it's not too far away, but in here, would it be but enough energy? To so I mean, he's going to be pissed because he's got a with what juice in it. Not necessarily, because it's always transmitting. It's transmitting beacons always, and you can just harvest those beacons. And it depends on what you're trying to do. We are not trying to power a phone. What we are trying to do is power things like a asset tracking device, a, a badge, or a keyboard, or a mouse. And more importantly, what the key is not in harvesting. The key is our Bluetooth consumes five to ten times lower energy. The analogy is both of us can run the marathon. I can run the marathon by eating a salad. He has to run the marathon by eating a full meal, right? So that's the that's the analogy. So we don't require much power. We can take modest amounts of power and then harvest it, and that is the key. So is it ARM Core Tech M0? The, the, te the, the key technology is not in the processor. Yes, we are using ARM M0, but the key technology is in the mixed signal solution. And uh, that's where the radio is. And we all came from um, a big company that has been doing wireless technology for the last 20 years. It's a mixed signal. Mixed signal RF. So this is a different part of the chip? It's different. The radio technology is what really consumes the power. The what? The radio. Radio. The radio inside the chip is what consumes the power. Can you point to it? Where, where is your uh, it's, radio? It's inside the chip. So uh, it's the it, same chip that does yes. it? Cortex-M0 yeah. or M0 Plus? If you look at it here, we, we, we this is the Cortex-M0, but the real, the real trick is in this part, the Bluetooth, RF, Link layer, modem, the energy management, the PMU. This is where the real patents are. And so it's not a Nordic semiconductor. It is thing. not, and we are competing with them. Competing. But how, what's, what's the main difference? The, the two main differences is our power consumption is many times lower than the competitors in the market space. And the second one is we are the only one in the market that has integrated RF energy receiver inside the single chip SOC. So you have integrated the, the arms inside the... We have integrated, we have done two things. We have integrated Bluetooth. We have also integrated the RF energy harvester inside the single chip SOC. These are the two different things compared to competition. Our Bluetooth is five times slower than competition. And there is no one that has RF energy harvester inside the Bluetooth chip. But uh, a Nordic does put the Bluetooth inside their chip, right? But they don't have the harvester. Yes. And compared to Nordic, we are much, much lower power consumption. But that's a big deal if you really... Uh, what? Does that mean you have less efficient uh, Bluetooth signal or nope. something? Or you do all nope. of it? All of it. We have patents. We have been doing wireless in other companies for the last 20 years. All of our people are from Stanford University and we have uh, raised Series A and Series B, total of $50 million. So, uh, is this in uh, actual uh, mass production? Or yes, we are in mass production today. We are working with uh, beacon providers, asset tracking manufacturers, we are working with remote control solutions, 
all of these you'll see in the market space sometime April through June of 2020. Uh, and you have, do you have a RF on the SOC, but you also have light motion and thermal on the SOC? Yes. The same one? That's the same one. The same one. You don't need to have different screw for each different energy harvesting what you will need, technique. What you will need is an external, like a solar panel. Obviously, I cannot integrate the solar panel inside the chip. Or a piezo converter for the switch. For the switch. And then there's a piezo converter that you need to put outside. But our PMU is the most efficient PMU in the market space. It's a power management unit. So it's better than what TI is doing? Yes. Yes. Uh, Apples to Apple comparison, we are much lower power, many times lower power compared to all the, all the competitor names that you talked about. Are you like famous? Or is it new? We are We've been in the month. We've, we've announced the product a year ago, and uh, we have uh, about 80 customers that are starting to work with us, and we are trying to fulfill the demand. We will have about eight to ten customers launch in by Q2 timeframe, and then probably 30 to 40 customers by end of this year. Um, energy harvesting is going to be huge, right? The way I would explain energy harvesting is, energy harvesting is in stage one today. It's got many legs to go for the next 20 years, and we believe it will continue to improve. What we're showcasing is the early stage of energy harvesting, and for energy harvesting to work, the trick is not energy harvesting only. It's you need to consume very, very low power. Only then a modest amount of energy will be sufficient for you. That is the key. So uh, how do you get five to 10 years of battery? Is it a big battery? Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a big battery. You get by doing two things. One is you reduce the Bluetooth power consumption, so you consume very low power, and then you harvest enough energy, one of the four kinds that I showed you previously, and then use that to kind of either supplement the battery or kind of recharge the battery. Uh, so one of the reasons that energy harvesting hasn't uh, really been huge thus far, except for solar. And, uh, it hasn't been huge success for two reasons. I keep going back to the same theme. Yeah. One is because you consume so much energy that you will have to harvest a lot of energy. Since we are not, we are consuming only five times lower than anyone in the market, we don't require a lot of energy. And then the second thing is, you need to have good energy harvesting techniques. Our RF energy harvester is higher efficiency than others in the market space. But you need to have the energy harvesting on the SOC. Yes. Maybe that's a big, that's one of the missing ingredients. That is a missing ingredient because if it's outside, you lose some of the energy that's when you harvest, then you have to supply to the Bluetooth chip. So how can you have these four different energy harvesting techniques on the same SOC? What is the, what yeah. is the functionality? How does it that's work? That's a very good question. What we have done is we have integrated uh, a special power management unit. What it can do is two things. It can take a very small voltage coming out of any of these energy harvesting solutions and then kind of modulate it so that it can boost it up to uh, 1.2 volts. And the second thing is it can manage multiple energy harvesting solutions. You can hook up a photo and you can also hook up a RF energy and then you can modulate between the two. But isn't it more efficient if you design an energy harvester specifically for each different type? Or you not, can do one that does all four equally good? Not necessarily, because in the end, the chip all requires is voltage. What it is trying to look for is a voltage. If you are able to kind of come up with a power management unit that can convert voltage no matter where it is coming from, then you're okay. So, uh, but if this is real, this is a pretty big, it's a revolutionary. Well, we so, are hoping that over time, that our products will be in the market in the next two years or so, that we'll be shipping in a quite high volume. So that's why we are working not just one kind of customer, we are working with keyboard, remote control, wearable customers. On the industrial side, we are working with IoT, 
We are working with beacons. We are working with asset tracking solutions. Sensors. Sensors as well. Uh, gas sensor. Well, those are all IoT solutions for us, right? We don't make the sensors, but sensors will hook up to our Bluetooth solution and then kind of transmit the whatever sensing it is, whether it's thermal sensing, whether it's gas sensing, or temperature, or, or, or heat sensing, or motion sensing, or any kind of sensing. But your solution is uh, useful not only for the energy harvesting people, because you say you're five times less than any competitor. That's correct. That's so why it can go in any Bluetooth device. We are very perceptive. That's why we have two kinds of solutions. We have the basic, excuse me, we have the we have the ATM2 series solution that is very extreme low power Bluetooth. So because it's five times lower, if you were to able to replace some of the competing competing solutions that you talked about. Lower dick. Yeah, you will immediately get three times the benefit of battery life. And then if you are able to do ATM3 solution, it's got the additional energy management technique. Now you can actually extend the battery life more than three times. You can do maybe five times or ten times, or even no battery at all. So you're absolutely right. We have a two-step solution or two kind of solutions we can use. How are you going to price it? Is it going to be a very attractive pricing? So or ATM2. It's going to be more expensive than everything else. Very good question. ATM2 which is competing with Nordic and TI and others, which will give you immediate 3x benefit, will be comparable with them. The ATM3 is going to add energy harvesting um, value add. It will be priced at a slightly higher price point because the value is not about the battery cost. The value is about paying someone $50 to go replace the battery the sensor battery that you just talked about every six months. And so it'll be priced at a slightly higher pricing point than the standard Bluetooth. Um, and we already have a lot of interest in both solutions. Isn't uh, one way to save a lot of power is just the algorithm, like how many times it pings and stuff. Is that basically what you do or is much more than that? We do two things. One is we design a special radio that the, it does multiple techniques depending on whether it's transmitting or receiving or standby mode, it conserves the power or consumes very less power. And then the techniques of energy harvesting, we actually try to do such that you can harvest at a very better, at a higher efficiency. Mind you, energy harvesting is still not at its peak today in the market space. We expect our energy harvesting solution to improve over time and then you can do even better things, even further energy harvesting, right? You can be like 50 feet away, maybe not just 10 feet, and then even harvest more. Let me give you one analogy and it'll be obvious to you. 20 years ago, we were doing Wi-Fi, and to do this distance, you were doing only 54 megabits per second. Today, you can do Wi-Fi, which is 50 feet away, and then do gigabits per second. Energy harvesting is at this stage today. We were at a company called Etheros that went public, and then we were bought by Qualcomm for $3.6 billion. We all worked there for 15 years, and uh, that's what, for us, energy harvesting is the same thing. Step one today, there'll be many more steps in the future. Etheros, isn't that the modem? No, no, Etheros used to be the Wi-Fi chip company. The Wi-Fi chip, yeah. Many years ago, that got bought by Qualcomm. All right. Uh, so, uh, if, if the receiver and the sender is using your chip, it, does that increase the battery life of the whole system? Or yes. It's compatible with anything else and it will be low power no matter what? It does. You need to sync the algorithm between the sender well, and the receiver. Well, we are Bluetooth compatible. We are Bluetooth standards compliant. We support the full Bluetooth 5.0 LE. So we can talk to any Bluetooth on the other side. We don't need our Bluetooth on the phone. We don't need our Bluetooth on the laptop or in the access point. We can talk to any Bluetooth in the market space. Do you think this energy harvesting is going to be in uh, every high-end Nike shoes? Is it going to be in phones in the future? Because I, the phone I, is moving all the time. Yes, can you but harvest this or is no point? It, it'll, start, it'll start with uh, very battery, AAA, AA, coin cell battery kind of devices. So that it can help those devices and eventually it will grow. 
I mean, phones, I think, is in the early stage. Energy harvesting for phones is very, very early stage. Uh, what we are targeting is anything that is running on AA, AAA, or coin cell batteries today. Smartwatch. Smartwatch. With a nice Where, uh, reflective display, yes. like e ink or something. Basic display, like a wearable, yeah. right? Nike shoes for sure, or any shoes, uh, uh, wearables, uh, consumer devices like remote controls. Smart glass. Smart headsets, all those, right? Remember, the key is not just replacing battery. If I were to just compensate for the standby current of the battery and extend the standby from one day or five days to 20 days or two months or even six months, that itself is a big, uh, big achievement. Uh, sometimes people uh, promote that they have a Qualcomm chip in there that does better signal for these headphones and stuff. It's important to have an, a stable signal, something in a, in a way, there's many different flavors of Bluetooth implementation, Of course, right? of course. Today we are not supporting headsets, but in the future we will be. Uh, but the, of course the quality of the Bluetooth link is important, but what we are promoting is both quality of Bluetooth link and also very, very low power and harvesting together.